Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks for the invitation. I appreciate to be here. Um, instead of talking a lot about the science and cell biology and technical data and, and, and clinical studies, I decided just to take a step back and, and look at the company um, and, and basically focus more on, on how Osiris has tried to make regenerative medicine a commercial reality um, while still innovating and while partnering with um, with the uh, with the regulators, uh, I think so. That's going to be more more my focus for today, and I'm not going to go into a lot of um, clinical data. So obviously, we are a, a, a publicly traded company. So if there are any forward-looking statements made, there are significant risks associated with those, and I recommend you to look at our SEC filings for those. Let me start with the conclusion slide. Um, and when you talk about cellular regenerative medicine, um, you know, like I said, commercial reality, innovation, partnering with partnering with the regulators. That is actually the core of what we want to um, what we want to pursue moving forward. The company has made some significant transition over the last couple of years, from 24 million dollars in sales in 2013 to 60 million last year. To uh, we reported the first uh, two quarters only this year to 44.7. So it's real and it's growing. Um, there's also significant financial discipline um, within Osiris, and we really are proud to be a profitable company. It's not that obvious as a biotech to be a profitable company, but we are profitable since about a year right now. Um, we are having a significant, um, robust pipeline. I'll talk a little bit about that, um, because ultimately, as you want to, you know, stay a pioneer in the space, you, you gotta, you gotta have a pipeline. You gotta have new products to be launched, both in the tissue world as well as in the biologics world. Um, we have no depth, and we have a pretty strong balance sheet. So. Pioneering cellular regenerative medicine, to do that at Osiris, um, I would probably guess pretty much every company, um, you, you gotta transform your organization and get out of the you know, highly scientific R&D focused organization to become a commercial entity. And as you transform, what I don't mean with that is hiring 10 reps and all of a sudden you're a commercial entity. That's not what I mean. Um, you know, it's really hard to get from zero dollars to $100 million run rate. Um, that requires a significant transition. But as you can imagine, the transition never stops. To get from 100 to 200 million requires a different company. 200 to 500 requires a different company. And beyond that, definitely requires a different company. So we constantly transition the company to become more sophisticated as a commercial entity. Innovation is at the core of Osiris. Um, pretty easy to, to measure. You know, The best metric is how many products did you launch? And we launched five products in the last nine years. We sold or partnered two of those, and we still have three. Um, so that's, that's a very strong uh, metric there. And differentiation in this space is very, very important as well. Um, you don't want to become a commodity business, especially as we started off um, within Osiris with a couple of originally tissue-derived uh, products. There's a lot of commoditization going on in that space. And so it's very important that you design your products uniquely to address a specific need, an unmet need, and, and you differentiate your product compared to the others. Um, that's, that's very important at the core of our strategy. It doesn't happen overnight. Uh, we have been around for a long time. Um, had a lot of you know, difficult times as well. Not everything worked out as we planned it to be. But I'm really proud of, of a lot of the firsts that Osiris Therapeutics has achieved over the last 20 or so years. And you can see on the slides you know, some of the most significant firsts that, that we pulled off. Uh, moving forward, though, the trajectory for us is, is a commercial biotechnology company in cell regenerative medicine. We have currently three products on the market, and they're basically in two business units. Uh, wound care, where Graphics is our leading brand, and Cardiform and Bio4, which is in the orthopedic sports medicine franchise. These products are all unique and all different, and all uniquely designed to address a specific unmet need. Wound care, it's pretty obvious, diabetic fibrosis, venous lecosis. Cardiform is cartilage regeneration, and Bio4 is, is bone growth. Um, and so this is the basis, the foundation of the company as it is today. And, and this is how, um, you know, by, by basically trying to get 
for each of these products to a minimum critical threshold, commercial threshold, I would say probably about $100 million a product is, is, makes it really meaningful. Um, and so we are, we are working with one of those, we pretty much checked that box off with graphics. The other two, uh, pretty recently launched uh, with partnerships, Artrex and Striker are key partners. And um, that was in the beginning of the year, so it's still a long way to go with those. But if you, you know, you've got to have a plan. Um, and at a very high level um, perspective, 30,000 foot perspective, the plan at Osiris is actually pretty simple. Um, you really want to build leading brands. Um, the point is not to crank out, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten products of five to ten million dollars a piece. Um, the, the real objective is to build a leading brand, to protect it, to invest in it, to build that brand equity, and to own a particular part of the market. Um, you want to have a significant financial discipline. We're a profitable biotech, and would like to keep it that way. Um, in the next couple of years, to secure our pioneering and leadership role, we will launch a couple of new products, both regulated as ACTPs as well as BLAs. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute. And what I'm particularly excited about is that um, you know we are having a, a significant focus and effort in the discovery department to develop new bioengineered uh, biologics. Um, and we do want to have those in a proof of concept study you know, as soon as possible. We're making significant progress on that. So what does it take? Um, to execute that plan, what do you you know? What do you have to do? Um, what are your strategic imperatives? Again, pretty straightforward. Uh, you've got to build best-in-class products, and you've got to figure out a way how to expand the market. Don't pigeonhole you because you're a regenerative medicine product into a tiny, tiny part of the marketplace. Um, we want to absolutely add more depth and diversification to the product portfolio. Especially in the wound care franchise, we have one leading product that is doing pretty well, graphics, but it's important to, to, add, um, to add products to that franchise. We have a whole commercial infrastructure developed. It's about 150 people in the field that are exclusively focused on graphics. That's okay in the beginning, but we, we do want to add some additional products to that. And, and lastly, which is something we announced pretty recently, you know, Osiris has been US focused for its whole um, history. And now we do want to um, increase our international contribution and start looking at, at opportunities to build a business outside of the United States. So back to the three pillars, uh, build best in class brands and expand the market. What do you have to do in order to make that happen? From my perspective, you know, between now and in a couple of years from now, let's say 2020, um, we do need to change the current underpenetration of advanced regenerative medicine therapies. You know, it's just to give you an example, um, graphics, which is, let's say about a $100 million product, give or take, um, we treat about 10,000 patients to do that. Um, we know that there are about two million, 2 million patients out there with chronic wounds, DFUs, VLUs. Half of those do not heal. And half of those are recalcitrant wounds. So there's about a million people out there in the United States alone that don't have, um, you know, that have, don't have a solution for their problem. And, you know, we treat about 10,000. You know, some of the other players in the space treat um, you know, slightly more patients, but I would say probably altogether, we don't treat 100,000 patients out of a million. And so there's still a significant underpenetration there. And one of the key reasons for that is, you know, as you bring these products to the market, you really need to assure that you get clinical evidence and, and you move your advanced therapy towards more standard of care. A couple of other things that need to happen in the marketplace that would really facilitate growth is, is concentration of wound care, not in 20,000 podiatrists across the nation, but in a few, say 1,000 to 1,200 specialized wound care clinics, they are more open to new therapies. Um, same for sports medicine, more and more specialized sports medicine franchises are being developed, which makes it easier for us to, to build a business uh, with our advanced therapies. Um, another thing is limited treatment guidelines. There's not many regenerative medicine products out there that are part of a specific treatment guideline. We need to change that. Um, one of the other things is, is obviously expanding the usage of the existing products, like for you know, our bone growth product and our cartilage product. There are definitely other areas that we could, we could focus on than, than spine and then uh, knee. 
Depth and diversification to the OSIRIS product portfolio, I think that's probably the most important one. Um, today, wound care means graphics, means DFU. It's pretty narrow. We do have uh, a plan in place and ongoing studies to expand that. Um, by 2020, we should have a significant uh, additional body of evidence on the usefulness of graphics in these type of wounds. Um, we'll launch a couple more products, like I said, and most importantly, we are really working on two BLAs to, uh, for our next generation uh, placental derived tissue. And we announced that earlier this week that um, we are in phase three for the DFU uh, study, and we do plan to start a VLU phase three program with the intent to get a supplemental BLA early 2016. I'm not going to go into the details with the others, but I think I, I talked to you about the bioengineered platform, and which is currently in discovery stage. In a couple of years, we really want to have completed some proof of principle studies there. <laughs> um, in, in international contribution, um, I think it's very difficult with tissue-based products to go uh, internationally, and that's one of the reasons why I think our next generation placental derived tissue BLA program, which is going to be uh, a program that we will work out with the EMEA a, a package and an understanding that the data we collect here will actually also allow us to uh, get a submission completed at the EMEA um, shortly after we submit at the, B, uh, the BLA at the FDA. That is definitely a tipping point for the organization because in Europe then you do have a biologic. It's tissue derived. It will be the first one as well. But you do have a biologic that, you know, it's much easier in Europe to get reimbursement and to build a business from a product like that. I'll call, talk a little bit about graphics, uh, which is our leading brand. Um, talking about building a leading brand, I think you know you got to get to about 100 million dollars. Graphics is is is, is about that. Um, so we have had a very strong revenue growth over the last couple of quarters. We continuously differentiate the product, and um, you know one of the most recent differentiations is antimicrobial activity. I'll talk about that in a second, and I'll talk about a couple of new data points that we are working on as well. Um, this is a graph that was done, or a study that was done by the University, uh, Rutgers University, the Center of Biomaterials. Um, you know, I heard yesterday it's sometimes challenging or the teasing kind of quote, cells don't matter. Um, you know, that's actually pretty funny. But the, the cells absolutely don't, uh, do matter. And one of the areas that they do matter is they do um, have antimicrobial activity, very important in wound care. Um, infections is, is, is the... Um, is the most you know worried about kind of side effect or, or or thing that the physicians have to deal with. If you don't control your infection, ultimately you can have an amputation. Um, so we are really pleased to see that um, cells do have antimicrobial activities. Um, we did a VLU study, a exploratory VLU study, in preparation for a large phase three VLU study. Pretty encouraging results, 20% with uh, standard of care, 60% with graphics. This wound that you see on the screen was healed in about uh, three weeks. I'm going to show you some other pictures. If you guys still have dessert in front of you, you might want to look aside because it's not a pretty picture. But this is a patient that we treated about uh, a little bit less than a year ago. This is a patient that had exposed bone and tendon. Look at that. Uh, it's a veteran that comes into the hospital. Normally, you amputate that. Um, so we treated this patient with graphics. We know this. We knew this would not be an easy kind of healing process. But regenerative medicine, you know, you can't pop a pill to to close that wound. Regenerative medicine here plays a, a, a very important role. And and in about eight applications, we were able to completely regranulate that tissue, as you could see on the picture there. And you know, reepithelialization started soon thereafter. And about five months after that, you close that wound, and that patient is walking around and still has his foot. Um, and that's the kind of victories that, that really keep us going, and that I believe is an absolute sweet spot for, for regenerative medicine. And I'm just running out of time, and I'm just done, right? <laughs> So I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Any questions? I will be around, so we can always uh, chat further about this. Thank you.